Hello and welcome to Animal Watch and today we meet one of the most primitive and rare dog breeds of Japan, the little wolf, the Shikoku. The Shikoku is the rarest and most primitive of the Japanese breeds. It resembles a Japanese wolf and legend has it that the breed has the extinct wolf blood running through his veins. They are cautious, brave, fierce, aloof, independent and extremely wild-tempered. So what will happen when I meet this breed today? Will they like me? And will he be a good pet to have? Or perhaps better suited to hunting wild boar back in the wilds of Japan? Japan, wooded islands with deep valleys and dark forests. Once home to the Japanese wolf. He once roamed the dark wooded valleys, his physicality suited to steep mountains and impenetrable gorges. He may be gone, but did he leave a legacy? Did he help create the primitive breeds we see today? One which is described as being the rarest, most primitive and most wolf-like of all the ancient Japanese breeds, the Shikoku. The Shikoku, not dissimilar to the extinct Japanese wolf, medium-sized, sesame-colored coat, erect fox-like ears. Some believe that this breed has the wolf's blood running through his veins, but is this true? This belief probably arose mainly from the dog's appearance and from the fact that the wolf is thought to have survived longer on the island of Shikoku, the place of this dog's origin, than anywhere else in Japan. Today I am meeting one of the only Shikoku who have made their way over to the United Kingdom. Well, I'm really excited today because this has actually been a dream of mine on Animal Watch to meet one of the rarest and most primitive dog breeds from Japan, the Shikoku. Now this breed developed on an island called Shikoku in Japan and he's a feisty hunting dog, but also like all the Asian dogs, he's got great self-confidence and he's, and he's described as being fierce but aloof and slightly dog aggressive because these dogs actually went into the original breeding of the Toza Inu, which is now used in Japan for fighting. They are described as little wolves and some people even say that they might have a little bit of the extinct Japanese wolf blood running through their veins. I wonder how he's going to behave around me. Should we go and find out? Come on. Hello! Oh my goodness me! <laughs> you have found you. confidence! Look at that! <laughs> Straight up at the camera yeah. lady! Uh -huh. So everything is on his terms, which makes training challenging. He's a hunting yes. dog, so his recall is uh, questionable. All the dogs are shedding right now. And of course, yeah, you must have a bit of a fur problem. You have to vacuum quite a lot yeah, with him yeah. around. Yeah, we need to get one of those robots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then he'd probably jump on it, Yeah, he? he would chase it. You can really see the primitive dog. You can really see it. Yeah. And I've got to say, I'm letting him get away with a lot more than really he should be allowed to yeah. get away with. But I'm only doing this so you can see the true character of these dogs. The Shikoku is cautious and brave, a temperate dog with good judgment. The Shikoku is also very loyal and submissive to its owner. It loves to be touched and often likes to give kisses, although it may be slightly aloof with strangers. After being totally jumped on and dominated with hard play, followed by then soft kisses, I felt that we could only admire his regal-like Japanese beauty more in a setting to which he would be accustomed to. So we headed off to the breathtakingly stunning River Hill Himalayan Gardens, where Keo could feel at home walking under the rhododendrons, bamboo and moist fern grottos. Watching Kyo move, the Shikoku does look fierce, almost wild. Its stride is smooth and swift like a wolf, 
and its superb ability to leap makes it well suited to running through the mountains and hills. The Shokoku was protected and preserved for its skills in hunting, mainly wild boar, in the mountains and hills of the Shokoku Mountains, and he lived with Mataji, or hunters. He is thought to have been one of the dogs used as a basal breed for the Toza fighting dog, so must have been chosen for his strength of character and bravery. Male Shokoku stand between 19 to 22 inches at the shoulder and weigh 35 to 55 pounds. Females are slightly shorter. I had read that it's best if they get used to other pets early. The Shikoku has a high prey drive, so they may not do well in households with smaller dogs, cats, or other little pets. Although they normally are calm and affectionate, the Shikoku might be best suited as the sole pet in the household. Also understand that the Shikoku is a quick learner, but not easy to train. They are independent thinkers who often choose not to listen to commands. They can be very dog aggressive too, so who better than to find out everything about living with a Shokoku than his mum, Sophie. Well, I'm here today with one of my most favourite breeds, a breed that I've been desperate to film for years and years and years. I used to just look at this breed in little books when I was growing up and think how beautiful they were. But what I didn't realise was how rare this breed was. So Sophie, We've got Kyo here, which is short for Kyoshi. Yeah. And of course, Kyoshi was my dog that I really loved. So I'm just like, what a beautiful name. So tell me, why did you want to get a Shikoku? I really like primitive dog breeds. I love the kind of independent nature of them. And the fact that he's quite cat-like. We really wanted a breed that was calm and quiet in the house but when switches on can be punchy. Yeah, because when I came in today, <laughs> he'd come in waves. He'd be suddenly really calm and quiet, and then suddenly it'd be jump, and he'd be on you, he'd be trying to climb up your back, nipping the back of your head, nipping your arms. I mean, very, very primitive behavior yeah. indeed. Yeah. I've seen that in wolves. I've experienced it in wolves. It's okay, Kia. <laughs> Kio, calm down, calm down, calm down. It's okay. It's okay, he's gone now. He's gone now. Right, so we had a, a little uh, moment then, didn't we? <laughs> I don't think he's seen so many small dogs in one place at one time. Yeah. <laughs> so when he's on a lead, what sort of behaviour does he exhibit towards other dogs when they go by? Especially if they're small dogs, he will think that they're something to chase. And if they're running, he will get very excited and lunge. He doesn't bark or growl. It's more out of frustration when yeah. he's on the lead. So that's something I'm working on at the moment. It's more that dogs will react to him um, and his kind of root rudeness. Yeah. He um, doesn't really know when a dog doesn't want to play. You have to manage it. So I can imagine that must be quite frustrating for you sometimes when you're out walking and you come across dogs and, and people have them off the leash yeah. and they just presume yeah. Yeah. that every single dog is going to be fine. There's a lot of people out there that have dogs that do not like dogs rushing up to them, jumping on them, presuming that they want to meet and presume they want to play. We just ask you very, very politely, just please just walk your dogs on lead or put your dog on a leash if you see a dog coming towards you. What do you normally say to somebody if they're a stranger and they're going to meet him for the first time? He's quite a good looking dog. Most people want to touch him, including children. And one of the things, especially with sort of primitive breeds, is they don't want to be touched. It's on their terms. Anyone who meets the first time, I always give them guidance and say, you know, just act as if he's not there, ignore him, don't try and touch him on the head. He's not going to do anything, he's just, he makes him feel uncomfortable. He might let out a sort of warning bark. He doesn't like to be touched by people that he doesn't know. But then, you know, give five minutes and he's your best mate, as yeah, you've seen earlier. Yeah, he's, but yeah, he's, he's, he's uh, just cautious, isn't yeah. he? He just has to work out whether somebody is friendly or not. Yeah. And of course in Japan, if they were used as working dogs, they would have bred them for independence yeah. and to be self-sufficient. So yeah. he's used to doing stuff for himself. Yeah. He's not a foo-foo dog. So thinking about the type of family that would like to have one of these, what are we thinking of, uh, an active family? Active, yes, but it's not to the stage of, I don't know, some dogs need to be walked sort of three times a day. He's quite cat-like, so if it's raining, 
doesn't he want doesn't to go want out. To go out. No. Doesn't want to go yeah. out. And some days we don't walk him, but we do enrichment and breed fulfillment things, things so hiding things in the house, chasing things, you know, the flirt pole, so lots of kind of things like that, um, using the Kong. So we have a little girl who's one. We actually got him while I was pregnant, so they've basically grown up together. But you should always be careful with any breed, raising babies yeah. and sort of dogs at the same time. I trust him 100%, but I wouldn't leave him in the same room as my little girl because you don't know how she's going to react no, or she's no. going to sort of jump on him. It's about teaching her as well as of course, you yeah. know, him. He's lovely with your daughter, as you said. How would you feel he would be meeting a strange toddler? Would you be far more cautious? Yeah, absolutely. He just wants to kind of go and jump on and sort of lick people's faces. And also the mouthing. The mouthing, yeah, yeah. I can put up with the mouthing because yeah. I'm, I'm a fully grown yeah. lady. Yeah. But a little kid. I'd never let him anywhere near a kid. It's terrifying if you've got a dog oh, running gosh, up to you yes. and just wanting oh, to kind yes. of... And even if he's being playful, it's not that's yeah. not appropriate behaviour. Um, so I wouldn't recommend Yeah, that. I mean, I'm used to the mouthing, but a lot of people will overreact and they'll send dogs back to rescues. Just to let you guys know there, I was letting him mouth and climb all over me. Sophie was saying that she does not allow that normally. We were just doing this for Animal Watch episode just so you can see what his real behavior is because yeah. these dogs if allowed to do that they will they'll try and dominate you they'll climb on you they'll you know hold your arm they'll bite you they'll test you very very raw very ancient primitive behavior but if Sophie says not to do it he won't do it yeah what's he like in the evening when you sit down to watch telly he loves a cuddle but it, equally he can go off in the other room and just sit in a dark room by himself just chilling out so he's very independent in that nature doesn't need your attention all the time I've heard that a lot of the shikoku can be timid I'm presuming this is again going going back to the primitive wildness of them. If they're not socialized enough, they can be really antisocial. Have you had to get him out and really, really socialize him? So we got him during COVID, so he hasn't had the socialization aspect that we would have wanted to in a way. Um, he did go to doggy daycare for a year. That's made him overly excited with dogs. I would say it's not about over socialization. It's about kind of the quality. So what's he like in the house? Is he destructive? No, he's really, really good in the house. He's never chewed, you know, apart from a cardboard box. We leave him at home by himself. He doesn't have separation anxiety. Oh, really? Do you think these breeds are used to being on their own? As a hunting breed, I do think that they're not the same pack dogs as, say, a husky is. So they are yeah. used to being by themselves. They do enjoy their own company. They're very, very loyal. It's a real family dog. Well, the, uh, the Akita yeah. is very loyal, too. Yeah. Would he guard your property? So he's kind of, and I don't know, maybe that's, Barks his more than his bite. He's, yeah, he barks. He wouldn't go and bite. He wouldn't. He wouldn't even nip. He would just sort of um, bark and sort of warn them. Well, my conclusion after meeting the Shikoku. So this is the first time I've ever met this breed. So I'm going on all of my experiences that I've had today. The first thing that really surprised me was the bombastic behavior so the the climbing on me the mouthing the pulling of hair i was like wow he's so brave he's got such confidence and then how he would go so very very quiet and so delicate and have such a soft mouth and take treats and be such a delicate little cat and lie down for me and then the next minute explosion he's on top of you again the other thing that i discovered today was when we when we were out and about how you have to be very very cautious with these dogs in public because they don't like strangers coming up to them and grabbing them and going to put their hand on their head they want to make their own decision about when they meet people so if you see one of these dogs please don't go up to them and just grab them never ever do that they need to get to know you very very slowly they do have a prey drive believe you me he's tried to get all the bees here today he's tried to chase squirrels he's tried to chase mice so these dogs will go and kill things if you let them off the lead there's also a little bit of sort of tension between him and dogs you need to socialize them very very heavily but like Sophie was saying it's got to be high quality socialization i wouldn't want this type of dog with his dominant behavior to get into a fight early on because it could make him more protective than what he is already he is very very hairy so remember if you're not house proud don't get one of these because when they shed it's going to come out in absolute hordes but isn't he beautiful and if you're really into primitive dog breeds and i'm talking about some of the oldest dog breeds in the world this is a fine example. Are you going to show people your face? <laughs> he is a fine example of what a real strong 
primitive hunting dog is. So if that's what you want in your dog, you need to change your life slightly, but it's worth it because they are beautiful dogs. Really lovely. Right, so Keo has a website, doesn't he? I believe he's on Instagram. Yeah. With lots of beautiful photos of him. So um, what would be his Instagram handle so people can find him? It's Keo the Shikoku. And he's so rare, there's only about five or six in the UK, isn't there? There's, there's yeah, hardly any. There's five or six I know. I'm sure there's there's probably more. There's um, ones on Instagram, have Instagram followers. There's probably about five or six. Yeah. Maybe, I don't know, maybe 15 yeah. max? I don't know. Yeah. There's, quite, there's quite a lot in Europe. Europe. There just seems to be, they just seem to be coming to England really now for the first yeah, time. Right, yeah. So drop by, <laughs> look, you can see his beautiful curly tail now. He's got his back to you. He has the most impressive curly tail. Stop it. <laughs> Yo, oi! Stop it, Keo. This is, honestly, this is, this is what you get with this breed. <laughs> naughty, naughty dog. And if you enjoyed this episode of Animal Watch, <laughs> <laughs> then please Look be sure to give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel by clicking this button in the bottom hand corner and tune in every week when we'll be bringing you more amazing episodes on dogs, wolves, animal rescue and conservation. Bye. <laughs>